Okay, so I've done videos on on uh, fleshing and on stretching the beaver, but I realized I didn't have a, a full length video on on skinning. So uh, I just had a video of that nice uh, that big black beaver I got yesterday in the snare, and then right after that, I went to another spot and uh, caught an even bigger one in a uh, 330 that I had as a bottom edge set. Uh, yeah, you can use 330s for bottom edge sets for beaver, just like you can use 110s for mink and muskrat. Um, if you can find the right spot. So, same with the uh, fleshing and stretching. I just try to do it the same way every time. And if you don't have one of these handy little uh, stands here, you can build one for a couple bucks worth of materials. Uh, obviously, it's not neat. I've skinned many beavers on a table and on the ground out in the woods. But this thing is a little bit uh, nicer. So uh, I normally start with three different knives. I have this big guy here I use to cut off the, the feet and the tail. Uh, I use the bolt cutters then to cut through that the bone on the hind leg. You don't have to cut off the feet, but it just makes my process easier. Like I said, I do it the same way every time. And you want to have a sharp kind of pointed knife to make your, uh, your cut up the belly. And I also use this to remove the caster glands, which... Uh, Right now they're worth as much or maybe more than a fur, getting about $6 an ounce for, for caster. Just sent about six pounds in auction yesterday. Sent almost all my fur in, so the garage is pretty empty right now. And then you have your uh, skin and knife. So anything that has, you know, kind of a rounded, a rounded edge here on the blade. Uh, a lot of guys just use this, this round one up here, that tight. But anything like that, will work. You, you can skin with a sharp knife like that and, you know, with your pocket knife or whatever. But uh, I've gotten kind of fond of this uh, this Patriot knife I got from uh, Kyle over at, over at Viking Tactics. That's pretty pretty handy for skinning. But uh, like I said, I just start off cutting off the front, the front feet and uh, just cut right in that, that little wrist joint. And, and they come off pretty easy. And then I cut around the back leg right where the, the hair ends there. And I cut all the way down to the bone on both of those. Like I said, you don't have to remove those. You can pull the, the height off over that foot. But for me, especially if I'm doing a lot of them, I just can use the, uh, the bolt cutter. Cut through that big uh, leg bone. And then uh, cut the tail off. Just come up about a half inch or so above where the tail line meets. And about half the time I get right in the, the joint where I don't have to cut through bone. And this time I missed it. But if you miss it, you just bend it a little bit. And it comes off pretty easily. These I uh, sell to a guy who makes fishing bait. Uh, cuts them in a little strip. So you can get a buck or two for the tails. Okay, with that knife, done with the bolt cutters. Now I take the sharp knife. I'm just gonna cut right from where the tail was, straight up the middle all the way to the to the chin. And you just wanna be careful you don't cut too deep so you cut into the guts. And I'm being a little bit careful right here around the vent too. I'm lifting up so I don't I don't wanna cut into my my valuable casper glands. I'm just lifting up a little bit to separate the, the skin from the abdominal wall. Like I said, you don't want to cut into the into the guts. They'll start spilling all over and uh, gets a little messy. But uh, other than that, it's pretty clean skin and beaver, except right up around the head. There's a lot of blood vessels and stuff, so I like to have a, just a piece of newspaper or rag or something to kind of stick under there and help absorb some of that blood. So then I just separate this a little bit here. So I caught both these yesterday. They were you know, wet and covered with a little bit of ice and stuff. So I like to just let them dry out in the garage overnight before I uh, skin them. And then if they're still wet, uh, after I flush them, I even let them dry another day. I mean, it's nice and cool here in the garage. So no problem with that. So 
So what I'm doing now is just making a space where I can get to those castor glands. And uh, a lot of people, when I think about trapping, they, you know, they ask right away, is it a, is it a male or a female? Well, it's, it's really hard to tell uh, just by looking at a beaver. If it's a, if it's a boy or a girl, they don't really have any external genitalia. Just the, the one vent looks the same on both of them. On a bigger female, you can feel the nipples. There's uh, two here and then two up here. Um, <clears throat> you can also squeeze a little bit on the caster and depending on the color of the the fluid that comes out, you can tell the uh, sex, but I'm like, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, we'll, we'll find out when we get in the castor gland, but just unusual. They don't have any external, you know, genitalia. All right, so now I can get to my castor gland, and uh, they're, they're right there. They're kind of, kind of hard to touch, and on the outside of those, these are the, uh, the oil sacs, so there's not much commercial value in those. Maybe a couple bucks a pound, but I don't take those. There's a lot of different ways to get the castor out. You just want to be gentle and kind of peel the, the skin off. You don't, but you don't want to cut anything. So what I do is I just kind of grab both of them. I'm pinching where it's at and I cut right up above them. All right, so this is a male. See, I didn't have to go through all that other experimenting to find out because as soon as you get in the castor, you know if it's a male or female. So a big beaver like this, this is a nice big, you know, 50, this one was about 55 pounds. And uh, so we'll get a few ounces out of these castor glands here. And they tend to have, they tend to be a little bit fuller in the winter when there's ice than they are in the fall or the spring because they're under the ice. They can't get out and do any marking and building castor around and stuff like that. So another advantage to trapping uh, in the middle of winter that, some guys just don't take advantage of. Okay, so there's my, my castor glands. They look kind of like, uh, I don't know, brain matter or something. And when I get them there, I just usually pop one underneath the uh, little baculum and then just kind of pull and, and gently cut till they're separated. And then you just kind of twist them and I hang them on a nail and I let them, I let them uh, dry like that for about, I usually dry them about three or four days and then I throw them in a box in the freezer until it's time to go to auction. And then a few days before I ship them off to auction, I will, uh, I'll take them all out and let the, uh, the frost, you know, thaw out and stuff like that before I put them in a, wrap them in some newspaper and throw them in a cardboard box. All right, so we got that done. So now we're just gonna take this guy's fur coat off, you know, just like taking a, a jacket off. So I'm just kind of pulling here on the skin as I'm, as I'm cutting. Got the uh, little bit of cheek meat up there and I'm cutting all the way around up to the lips now. And I get the, the front leg right there. I don't know if I have my camera set up so you can see that. Maybe not. And then we got the hind leg here. So the beaver skin is, is pretty, it's pretty thick. It's pretty forgiving unless you get a real real small when they're, you know, the skin's real thin around the belly and stuff, but you don't have to be super careful. Like if you just make a little slip with your knife, you're probably not going to cut through the hide like you would with, you know, a fox for instance, or, you know, even a muskrat that are, have really thin skin. So a little bit more forgiving. Uh, of course, now I said that I'm probably going to make a cut. So now that I cut that hind leg off, I can, I can feel the, the bone where I cut and I just make a little nick there with my knife. Pull it down, I can get my my finger through and just separate. So I got the basically the back leg is, is already done. Now I can rotate this guy in my little tray and the front leg. I'm just I'm pulling down to expose that elbow, make a little cut around there until I can get it up towards his wrist. Just making little small cuts as I'm as I'm pulling down. And I pull it down until I can work my thumb through his uh, through his wrist joint there. I get my thumb through, and now I can just pull that off. And then continuing down, I don't 
uh, skin out too much of the head right here because it's it's really thin. There's no not a lot of room for air because um, there's no fat there. So you can put a little nick right there if you're not careful. So I, I don't do the eyes yet, but I I do the uh, the ear. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little hole right there. So I just did one ear. And that's pretty much all I'm doing on the head for now. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on the hide, pulling it away, and then just making small little cuts in between there. Now some of the uh, some guys do what's called a clean skin, where it takes a little bit longer and and more precision, and they skin the hide leaving almost all of the fat and meat and gristle on the carcass. Um, I have not perfected that yet, but if you, it takes more time to do it, but then it saves you uh, a lot of time in flushing. There's, there's not much to do for flushing. So I don't know, I, I'm not usually in a big hurry. Um, this is just my hobby. You know, I'm not catching uh, 20, 30 beaver a day or anything like that. It's more like a couple a day, so. I just take the extra time, you know, flushing them. Okay, uh, again, I probably don't have my camera. So what I do is I'm, I'm doing half the beaver. So I did the ear, and I'm doing it until I uh, feel this the spine here. So I do just past the spine. So I'm doing just over half on this side. And back here by the tail, it gets kind of kind of thick. You're gonna unless you're doing a clean skin, you're gonna get this this meat and gristle on here. But uh, that will all come off on the flesh and bean. Okay, so I got half done. So what I'm going to do now is, um, since I'll just stay on this side, so I'm going to, we're just going to flip the whole, uh, whole thing around here. So one disadvantage to cutting the feet off is there's not much to grab onto. I can't grab the feet. Uh, they're kind of awkward, but just grab what you can. And I flip them around, and now I'm just going to do the other side. Touch up my knife real quick. And same thing on this side. Just getting this first cut here off the belly. And a lot of times, if you're skinning the kits or the real, you know, the small ones, the yearlings and stuff, their their abdomen wall is just it's it's so thin that um, you know, you're often going to make a little cut through and then you're going to have a little bit of the intestine coming out. Um, the bigger ones are a little bit, a little bit tougher. So I don't usually, you know, make that cut into the belly with the, uh, with the bigger ones. But like I said, it's not a big deal. It does, and, you know, just, they just kind of get in your way more than anything. Okay. We've got this, uh, cheek meat here that'll all come off in the structure. And like I said, there's a lot of arteries and veins up here on the head so when you cut one you're gonna have some blood start oozing out. That's what keep my newspaper here. Alright so I can rotate them around a little bit and uh, get back here to the back leg. I can feel uh, through the skin where that, that bone is that I cut with the bolt cutters. Just make my little cut there until I can get my uh, finger through. Give a little yank to separate that. And then up here at the front leg. Same thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm pushing up on the leg and I'm pulling down here to try to get that uh, elbow exposed. All right, so you can see the elbow. Now I'm just gonna try to Make some little cuts here as I'm pulling on the hide to get it up towards his wrist. Try and get 
get my thumb through there like that and then just pull that off I probably made that look harder than it is These guys have some really big lips and the reason for that is so they can, they can actually chew underwater. They can't eat, they can't swallow underwater. What they do is these lips, they can fold them in behind their teeth to block off their, their uh, airway and stuff. And then they can still use their incisors and they, so they can chew wood uh, underwater while not getting any water into their, uh, you know, their mouths and their throat. So pretty ingenious, and if you remember from the uh, the stretching or boarding video, I just I cut those big lips off in the uh, in the boarding process. All right, so I'm going to go up here to the other ear, and if you're not sure where it's at, you can just look on the other side. There's the ear, you can kind of feel it. And you know, it'll be kind of a hard cartilage right there. It's cut through and now I'm, I'm through the ear. There's a little hole now going into his skull where the ear was. <coughs> and that's as far as I'm doing on the head for now. So now I'm going to flip him completely on his belly. And what I do is I just pull the hide now off towards his head and let it hang down towards the ground. It's not actually touching the ground. So I use the weight of the hide to help pull pressure help me skin it. So I've already got, you can see the one ear hole there, there's the other ear. So just, you know, gently cutting here. So what do we got next? We got a couple of eyes coming up. And uh, for some reason guys, you know, have trouble with eyes on different animals. Um, but I guess you just, you don't have to be in a hurry. But if you do make a little mistake here and make the eye hole a little bigger than it needs to be, um, I don't think you're going to get really deducted in value at the market because there's really no commercial value in the in the fur on the head. But if you're going to get them tanned or anything, it, you know it'll look better if the eyes are just normal eye full size. So I know that there's an eyeball right there, so I'm just going to cut you know a little bit deeper than normal. I'm not cutting down below it. I'm cutting right across the eye. And then once I'm just past it, making kind of a little deeper cut there. So that eye's done. Got the other one right here. And now all we have left basically is the lips and nose. So I'm just cutting on that side of his teeth. Cut on the other side. And again, I'm using the weight of the hide, which weighs. You know, that's uh, probably 15 pounds or so with all the fat in there, 10, 15 pounds. Okay, so we got the lips. All that's left now is the nose, and depending, uh, you know, you can just cut through the, the cartilage really gently. You can see his two nostrils there, and then we're done. And that guy's ready for the, for the fleshing beaver. Uh, for those of you who eat beaver, uh, we actually eat beaver a couple times a month. Uh, you know, you get this 55 pound bee runners. I don't take much meat off. I take the, the back strap here. I just cut right along each side of the spine, just like you would on a deer. And then maybe a, a hunk of meat here off the, uh, off the hind leg. So out of this, you know, big beaver, I'm only going to get two or three pounds of meat, but, uh, that's plenty for me and the, me and the kids. All right. So that's, uh, my 
way of skinning beaver. Again, I don't, I don't tell people how to handle the fur. I just show people how, how I do it.